Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting Lady Legs and <laughs> I'm sipping on some black cherry tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, deep yellow, and fire red. And of course, you could switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'm going to be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number three round synthetic brush. I refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you could switch up those if you'd like as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same type and size of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you could print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, black and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a nice dark brownish gray color that we'll be using for predominantly the whole canvas, but we'll use it on the wall portion, which is going to come down about two thirds to three quarters of the way. And then we'll use that dark brownish gray on the floor as well, but we'll incorporate a little bit more white to it. So I have pre-mixed my color that I'm going for, which is right here. So what this is, is I used a real lot of my brown paint and I just added a touch of black and a touch of white into it. So what I'm in essence doing is making it a little bit more softer looking than my burnt umber. It makes it look a little bit more grayish and the white in it also helps to um, helps with the opacity so it doesn't end up as streaky as the burnt umber would on its own. So the white helps with that. Um, so once you've got the color that you're looking for, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be going left to right to create a nice solid color on my background. You might find that as you go through this process that you may want to do two layers on your background so you have a nice soft and um, fully rendered coat to it. But if you've used a little bit of the black and white in your brown, it will help with the opacity. And you may actually like the variations in tones that it creates. But if you end up seeing little brush marks or you've or you've got little streaks throughout it or some areas are a little bit lighter or darker than others and that's not visually appealing to you, then you could certainly just do a second coat on it. So don't feel that if you don't get it fully painted on this first coat that you can't adjust it any or do a second coat, you can certainly do that. Or like for me, I know that my little edges tend to be a little bit more transparent because I kind of pull from those edges, so I like to do a second coat to finish those type of um, aspects of it. 
So I'm going to come down about three quarters of the way or two thirds of the way. So if this is about halfway down my canvas, and this is about a halfway between here and here is about a quarter. And then I'm a little bit above that. So this is about as far as I'm bringing my wall down. And then I can use my brush as a measuring tool and make myself a little bit of a marker on the other side. So I'm going to bring this color my wall color all the way down to here. I don't need to have a perfectly executed line because I want this transition from the wall to the floor to look a little out of focus. So I'm going to just give myself a nice soft transition from the wall to the floor. So once I've got it down to that mark, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, with my dirty brush, pick up white paint. So I'm going to create this really light, area right where the wall meets the floor and I'm just going to rub my brush back and forth left to right to get these two areas to meet with a nice soft out of focus line. So something like this will work for me and then as I work my way down that floor I'm going to pick back up my wall color. So this is going to help me to transition down into a darker version of the floor down at the bottom of my canvas. So started up at the top with the white and the remnants on, of the floor color on my brush. Now I'm just picking up my floor color on my dirty brush and this is going to get it to transition down into a darker tone and make it look like it's coming more into focus. And then what I would do is I would wait for my canvas to dry or dry it with a blow dryer, <laughs> see if it's uh, got the gradients that I want. And if I want to do a second coat, I certainly can. But if you feel that it is as well as you want it to, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our legs and our shoes. I'm gonna be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you would like. I just like to use this because it seems to erase really easy so I can make corrections if I need to. So I'm gonna be using this. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll magically have some basic shapes that we'll be able to color in during the painting process. I do recommend that before you start the step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dry and get it dry that way. So whenever I'm doing um, body parts or things that I feel really need to represent a certain thing, I like to, when I'm looking at my references, try and discern or see a generic shape to start with and then I build off of that. So when I'm looking at these legs that we're about to draw, I notice that there's these long almost triangular rectangle type of shapes that make up the leg that I can kind of start from and this, then build my way off of. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the leg that is closest to us um, by going up in the right hand corner. I'm going to be making myself a marker about two inches away from that corner like that, and then I'm gonna come down the side maybe about two, two and a half inches, make myself another marker. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself about the center of my canvas. So left to right, top to bottom. For me, the center of my canvas is right about here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the left of that about three, three and a half inches, make myself a little marker, and then I'm gonna to go to the left of that about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a little bit of a marker. I can connect these two just so I have my, my basic shape to be started and then I'm going to connect this corner to here and I'm going to just connect it with a diagonal line. It does not have to be perfect. This is just, I mean you could whip out a ruler if you want to, but this is just um, to get us started during the painting in process. So something like that. I even missed my mark a little bit, which is totally fine. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do this one. When I'm doing a, a connect the dot kind of thing, one of my tricks is to watch the other marker. And that kind of helps steer my tool or my eye into where I wanna go. So you can start at either end and then just kind of watch where you're headed. And it's not always gonna be perfect, but at least it'll get you in that general vicinity. 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some shape off of this, um, this create form or shape to her leg off of this basic shape that we just drew. So what I'm going to first do is decide where I want my ankle to go. So I'm going to have the ankle right about in through here. So now that I know where my ankle is, I can build a, a knee, a calf, and all that other good stuff. So she's got her leg kind of, um, well, it's kind of crossed over the other one. So I'm going to come down from here, maybe about another inch, and I'm going to give myself, hmm, yeah, about another inch, somewhere in through here. I'm going to give myself this little bit of a curved kind of line coming in through here, which is going to represent her calf. And then I'm going to meet it with this diagonal line that I have in through here. So that just immediately gives me her the underside of her leg, bringing it into her calf, and then I'm going to um, just kind of ride along here, and then her foot is going to start down here. But before I do her foot, I'm going to go ahead and do her knee. So I have her knee kind of projecting from the corner of my canvas in through here. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bump through there, and then I'm going to get it to meet in with my diagonal line. But I don't necessarily need it to go super straight, so because our legs are not super straight, so you can have little ripples and stuff coming off of it. It doesn't have to be perfect, so that's how I'm going to do that in through there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build her foot. So she's got her heel is going to be coming right off of where her ankle is, so somewhere in through here is where her heel is going to go. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit further than here. So I'm going to bring this down just like this and then bring it back up. That's going to be kind of the arc or arch of her foot. Then I'm going to bring her, um, her toes are going to be kind of kicking up her shoe, something like this. And then I can bring this back around. This is the top of her foot meeting into her ankle. So that's all I'm going to do for her, for that leg. We'll put her shoe on in a minute, but first we need to give her her other leg. So I'm going to do the same thing, which is give her a basic shape to start from, and then we'll build off of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from, or I'm going to start kind of right up at this area in through here. This will be my first marker like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right about here. So this is going to be maybe about an inch, inch and a half to the right over here. That'll be my second marker. Then I'm going to come all the way down to, um, I would say maybe right, right almost where the, the line kind of meets the, hor the horizon, <laughs> the, the floor kind of meets the wall. So somewhere in through here is where I'm going to put that one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the left of that, I would say maybe about an inch, inch and a half. And you can just connect these two. This is just kind of giving us a starting point for this. And then of course you can connect up here to here. And again, this is gonna be just a diagonal type of a line, just connecting these two in here. And then this will be the same thing, just kind of connecting these two in through here. So now, now we gotta build some shape onto her. So we'll start it pretty much how we did the other one, which is the top of the leg. So this leg is crossed over this one. So all I really need to do is give myself a little bit of a line in through here that's gonna meet the underside of her knee. And we're gonna erase some of these guidelines in a minute so you can see it a little bit better. And then I need to give her a little calf. So you can start somewhere down. Well, let's talk about her ankle. Her ankle I'm gonna have somewhere in through here. So that'll tell you where her ankle is like we did to the other one. So I'm going to give her a little bit of a calf muscle in through there. And then the front side of her leg, I really don't need to do much, but I do want to give it a little bit of a shape. So I'm going to start at her ankle and just kick it out just a, a little tiny bit. I don't need to do much. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her foot on. So this foot is going to be resting on the floor. So I'm going to give her heel in through here. It's going to be resting on the floor, but she has a high heel shoe on. <laughs> so I've got her heel in through there. I'm going to bring it down curve just a little bit like this. I'm going to kick it over here. This is her toes within her shoe. And then just bring it up to this right like this. And then I'm going to bring it up towards, this is the front of her foot, into her ankle like that. Now that I've got her feet, I need to give her some shoes. So 
I'm going to do this right shoe first so you can see how I'm going to build it off of that foot and that'll guide you into however you whatever kind of shoe that you want to make. I clearly have high heels so her heel is up. If you wanted her to have like sneakers or something like that you would have put the rest of her foot kind of flat on the floor. So because she's wearing a high heel I just need to build a shoe around that foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it from where the the heel is in through here. I'm going to build the back side of the shoe something like this. I want it to be a, a tall shoe so I need it to come down about flat with the uh, front of her foot. Something like this is going to be the back of her shoe. This can just ride along her the inside of her foot like this. Then I'm going to put the bottom of her shoe like this and you can build it whatever way you want. I've got the, the front of her shoe in through here it kind of comes up to where her foot meets her toes. I've got to put the side of her shoe on so that would be something like this like that so now we've hidden her foot within the shoe and I'm gonna now show you how to erase the guidelines so you can see what I just did. So I'm just taking my medium brush with a little bit of water I'm gonna erase all the lines that I don't need. So right now I'm erasing the foot outline. So then all I have left is her shoe. So now we can see that shoe is magically emerging from underneath there. And then I'll erase this long um, rectangle type of a shape that I created. So there's just water on my brush right now. And this is going to show you how this, we just created this entire shape for her leg and her shoe. And if you still see some of your chalk, behind there that's fine. So this goes here. I don't need this little line in through here. So we can see that back leg now. So we're going to give a shoe on this one but this one she's kind of kicking off. So really my biggest goal is to make sure that it fits on her foot or it would fit on her foot and it's similar to this one. So you could theoretically take this shoe and just trace it and then just outline it there but I'm just going to kind of use my brush as a um, guide to help me through this process as a measuring tool. So I know that she's going to have a full, you know, the same type of shoe and I know that I want it hanging off of the foot in through here. So I can really just kind of take my my brush and say, okay, well how long did I make this one? So this is about this long. So if I want the toe to be kicking it off, I can kind of say, all right, well, this is this is going to be the tip of it. I can just kind of start the tip of that shoe, similar to how the tip looks over here, so something like that. And then I can just say, okay, well, about it's going to be at a side angle. So I can take my brush and see how long it is, and I can just at least start myself with a marker. That would be the back end of it. And now I can just build a very similar shape. I could say, okay, if this is where the point is up here, I can build a little point here and then maybe measure how long I did that heel. So this way I'm giving myself a better shot at getting this symmetrically the, in a similar way, one to the other, without having to go through the whole process of tracing it or anything like that. I know it needs to fit on the foot, so I can always kind of measure that foot with it, and I know I want it to be similar to that, so I'm going to just kind of model it after that. So I've got that going on. I'm going to have it cross over her toe a little bit. So we have that toe inside the shoe. I've got the heel of the shoe over in through here and then I've got the bottom of the shoe, something similar to what that is. And then I would just step back, see if every, oh, I need to erase my guidelines here. So water on my medium brush, gonna magically erase this little toe. I'm gonna then erase this center. And again, just water is on my medium brush, making sure that I've got all of these guidelines erased so they don't confuse me during the painting in process. And then you can make any little adjustments that you want. We are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your chalk and your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting the base coat for the legs and the shoes. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush, but I'm going to use my medium brush to mix my colors so you can see where I'm headed with them and how I got there. So I'm going to be doing a two custom colors. One is going to be a, a 
skin color for the legs and then I'm going to be doing a peach color for my shoes. Again, you can adjust this and customize it to whatever you want. Maybe you want black shoes or purple shoes or red shoes, whatever you like. <laughs> so what I'm going to do for the skin, I'm going to pre-mix myself my skin color first so you can see where I'm headed with that. This is, I have already done them so you can see where I'm headed and I'll show you how I got there. So this is the skin color that I'm going for. How I got to that is about equal parts of yellow, red, brown, and white. And then I just spin it together. So you can adjust this. Obviously that's a little bit too red, so I'm gonna add a touch more yellow and white. You can adjust this to be whatever skin tone you want. I have a tendency to kind of use my own skin tone as a barometer. So when I'm creating these colors, I like to kind of just take my brush and hold it up to my own skin. So a lot of my paintings you'll see have very fair skin people in them because that's the best skin tone I can make. Um, but you can of course make yours into whatever you know color that you would like. Once you've got it close, you can adjust it either lighter or darker or pinker or yellower or redder, whatever works for you. So that's gonna be my skin tone. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and then I'm gonna create my custom shoe color. So again, any color that works for you is totally fine. My color right here is predominantly red, but I have a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow in it because I wanted it to be a little on the, on the pinky peachy type of side. But again, make yours into whatever you want it to be. You can make yours, you know, really light pastel pink or maybe you want white shoes if you wanted white shoes I would suggest going with like a tan color to start or a light gray color and then adding highlights on top of there so that's going to be my shoe color so now I'm going to put away my medium brush I'm going to take out my large brush and I'm going to be doing a thin coat of um, both of these colors on each uh, section so I have my skin tone in through here and at this point in time I don't really need to do any fancy brush stroke, but I do want to make sure that I leave a, a visible space between this leg and this leg so I don't lose the information as to where one leg meets the other. So what I do is I just do my paint a little bit thinner in the, those regions so I can see some of that black behind it and that'll help me to um, be able to see those separating areas later when I go to when I go to paint it in and you might find that you need to do more than one coat I'm um, going to be kind of doing a thin layer so I know for me when I do a thin layer I most likely will need to do a second coat um, because I will see some brush marks and I want to make sure that I have a nice uh, even coat on this initial skin tone which will help me to build my future um, layers and information. So I will get this, this coat on, I'll let it dry, and then I'll come back for a second coat before I, um, before I move on and do the other details. Because again, I inevitably am gonna have some, some variations in this um, skin, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I want uh, her skin to look really smooth and kind of um, soft, so, for me, in order to accomplish that, I want to have a nice, smooth base coat. So again, I'll come back and do a second, a second layer on that. But I'm just going to go ahead and get this leg colored in here with the, same, with the same color. And again, as I'm meeting the two legs in through here, I'm not pressing very hard with my brush, which is allowing me to have an even thinner layer of paint in through there so that's going to allow me to see the difference between one leg versus the other. We're going to have lots of shadows and stuff where these two legs meet so just having that visual um, separation will allow you to not get lost during the painting process when we go to do other details on top of it. So that's just one of those little tricks that you know even though you want to paint the whole thing, leaving those little visual guides just makes your painting process a bit easier, especially when you're using similar colors on similar sections or on sections that are abutting one another. And then I'm just bringing this all the way down to her shoe, making sure that I kind of go all the way up to the chalk mark. But again, this is that time where 
you can certainly reshape things. So if I'm going about doing the leg and I'm like, oh, I think I want her calf to be a little bit bigger, I can certainly bring it out. Or if I feel that I've drawn on a calf that's too big, I could have left some of that chalk visible and then I can just erase it with a little bit of water at, after afterwards. So that's looking pretty good for the skin tone. Now I'm just gonna wash and dry my brush. And when you get to the shoes, you if, if the bristle, if the three inch or three quarter inch wide brush is too big for you, you could certainly switch to your medium brush. That's gonna be wherever your um, comfort zone is, but I know that I'm just going for a, uh, a base coat here and I don't need it to be perfect. So I will, utilize or use this brush but again you could certainly just switch brushes if if your bristle brush might be um, if your bristles are a little have a mind of their own which sometimes bristle brushes tend to do <laughs> you could certainly just switch to your medium or small round and get it on that way we'll be using the smaller brushes as we go through the detail process but again this is just a, a step to get this coat on don't worry about it being perfect uh, on the shoes I will do a second coat like I did for the skin um, so the first the first coat is not terribly important but I am going to do like I'm going to do on the skin I'll wait for it to dry and I'll come back and do a second coat on it so I have a nice solid start to these two um, to these two objects, to the legs and the shoe. And that shoe just grew a little bit, there we go. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna let mine dry. I'm gonna put a second coat on it, and then you can do the same. And when you're done, we are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer to our skin. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are my skin tone, brown, and maybe some of my shoe color, which you'll see how I incorporate that, um, and that might be it. So what I'm really gonna be doing in this step is I'm gonna be adding shadows on the legs in order to give them some contour. And I'm also gonna be adding some little bits of detail like where the toes go into the shoe, maybe a little bit of a different color on the skin for the, the bottom of the foot. And we're gonna build our way to the light, but we're gonna be doing our highlights and stuff in the next step. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be adding the darker areas and making sure that they blend in with the base coat of the skin or our mid-tone for the skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in my darkest areas, which are gonna be where the two legs are crossed. I'll have a nice shadow in through here. I'm gonna have shadows on the back side of the legs because I'm my light source is up above these legs, so I'm gonna have dark, darkness on the back side of them. I'll have little creases in, their, in the ankles, maybe along the ankle bone here, I'll have a little bit of a shadow. I'll have some shadows where the sh foot goes into the shoe and at the bottom side of the foot as well. And then maybe a couple little shadows where I feel maybe the, the knee meets the, the shin and where the muscles and stuff are located as well. So I'm gonna start, I've got my medium brush, I'm gonna start with brown paint on my brush. And you never need a lot of paint on this step. I'm gonna um, put it in the darkest creases where I feel that it would be the darkest, which is gonna be behind this leg because this leg is gonna cast a shadow onto um, the other leg. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of rub it in. I kind of push it up into the darkest area. So I want it to be the darkest where the two legs kind of meet. And then I fade it out into the rest of the leg. So as I'm fading it out, what I'll do is like right now, I'm gonna pick up my skin tone on my dirty brush so I can get them to blend together. So this way, if it's not, if I'm not able to rub it into a nice soft blend, I can just pick up some of that original skin tone and that will help me to get it to blend in well. So now that I've got that one, I'm gonna just kind of 
rub the remnants of my brush on the back side of her leg. So that one's looking pretty good to me. So now I'm going to just kind of go down this back leg. So my darkest area, I'm picking up some brown, is going to be right behind this heel. And this is where you can start to, it, like I had a little extra chalk. I can erase it with my finger, but if you had extra chalk, you could erase it with a little bit of water. Um, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to give her a little couple of little wrinkles in the back of her ankle in through here. So just kind of pulling this out and I'm going to keep it the darkest over on the right hand side. So I'm just kind of rubbing in that brown and my brown is transparent. So even if I overlap it onto my background, you that's okay because you might not see it much at all as it overlaps into that dark um, background if it is transparent. Now I'm going to pick up some of my base color, which is my um, skin color. And if I want, I actually am picking up a little bit more brown. I want to accentuate maybe where her calf muscle is. So I just picked up a little bit more brown, just adding a little, the little hint of it dipping in, in through there. And then I just make sure that it blends in with the rest of the skin tone in through here and then I just come down that leg. So I like to use these round brushes. You could certainly use a, um, a flat brush or a uh, bright brush in order to do this type of blending, but I use kind of the side of my bristles and uh, use a scrubbing type of technique. You could, you know, adapt whatever brush stroke really works for you. And then I just keep picking up my skin tone in order to make sure that this blends as much as I want it to. The left hand side is going to be illuminated by my highlights and we'll get to that in a little while. So we, you don't have to worry about that left hand side too much. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put myself a little shadow in the crook of the foot where it's going into the shoe. This is the inside uh, of the foot, this is the outside of the foot. So I can put a pretty good um, deep dark area in through here as if this is the arch of the foot. So don't be afraid to put a pretty dark um, shadow in through here and it can even creep up that foot a little bit. You could even, depending on the skin tone that you were using, you could even possibly go black in that little area. So that's gonna be up to you how deep of a shadow you want in through there. I am gonna put a tiny bit of a shadow right where the foot meets the shoe as well. So just a little kind of sliver of a line right in through here, just so I can make sure that I've got that represented, that it's got a little dip into that shoe and maybe even a little bit where the toe goes into the shoe in through here. Even though the light source is up there, I still feel that I'd have a little contour shadow in through there. So that's looking pretty good on this leg. Maybe just finesse that a little bit more in through there. So I'm gonna move on to this leg over here. So again, starting with my brown, I'm gonna decide where I want my darkest shadows to be. She doesn't need a big shadow like this on this leg because this is the leg that's up top, but I do need shadows like behind the ankle, the ankle bone, maybe down below here and in through here. So I'm going to start back on my ankle in through here, give myself a little bit of a dark area where that ankle kind of just really bends in that area and just kind of blend it into the back of that heel a little bit. I got a little ankle bone, I would say somewhere in through here, give myself that ankle bone. I'm going to pick up some of my skin tone just to get this to blend in. And I don't need these shadows to be as severe as the one that I did over on that right hand side that's underneath that other leg. So I'm using more of my um, skin tone with this shadow combination so it doesn't go too, too dark on me. Um, and if yours does go a little bit darker than you want, then you can certainly just bring back some of that skin tone. I'm going to do um, a little bit up the back side of this leg. So I'm going to pick a brown plus my skin tone again for that same reason so it doesn't go too, too dark. But I want there to be some kind of shadow. So I've got brown plus my skin tone on my brush at the same time and then I'm going to rub it into the um, into the skin itself. I see that her calf muscle is right here so I'm going to make sure that I've got a little bit extra 
um, darkness in that area once I've got this nice and blended. So I'm going to pick up just a little bit more brown just to accentuate just a little hint of it. You don't need to do much in order to get the contour of something like that to appear. Just the hint of it will, will work out just fine. And then I'm going to just make sure that this back side is colored in as much as I want because I saw some of my um, canvas or some of that background color underneath there. So that works. I'm also going to put um, a little bit on this bottom side of the leg. So again, my skin tone plus brown because I don't need it that dark. So I'm going to pull this in a little bit up in through here to maybe this is kind of the bottom side of her leg and her knee is going to pop out. So again, just kind of using a little bit darker version of the skin and I and I'm got to that by using the skin tone plus brown on my brush and just subtle. I don't need to do much. I've got my knee in through here so maybe it dips. Oh, I need a little bit more brown than that. We need to be able to see it. Maybe it dips a little bit right at the bottom of that knee. So something like that and maybe we've got um, her other structure around her knee with like her her muscle and her shin bone. So just creating these kind of um, gentle um, contours, so her knee is in through here, is going to make it look a little bit more realistic. And don't fear going too dark because again, you can always bring back some of that skin tone. Don't fear putting too much detail in because you can always back it off with just a subtle bit of your um, of that original skin tone. So I'd rather kind of incorporate as much information as I, as I feel is um, warranted and then s just soften it with a little bit more of my skin tone as opposed to being too subtle and just making her leg look flat. So these these additions that I'm doing are going to give her leg lots of form. They're going to give it lots of information. And they're going to make it look more realistic as opposed to it just being flat. So I just darken that a little bit more. This is looking pretty good. And we've got, of course, the lightness or the highlights that I'll be putting on in a minute on the future step. So I just keep kind of all alternating back and forth between my skin tone and brown in order to get these... Um, the shadow areas in where I want them. So as I travel down this shin, I and into the foot, I kind of reserved this foot for last because I'm going to be adding a little bit more information because I want to add just shadow in by her toe, shadow underneath it, but I also want to kind of add a more realistic skin tone to it or another tone to the skin. So I'm going to do that with some of my shoe color and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of brown on the tip of my brush and I'm going to give myself a little bit of shadow up in through here where her toes are kind of coming out or into her shoe it, like that. I'm going to put some right in through here because this rep will represent the bottom of her foot in through here maybe a couple of streaks going up to represent the you know the crevices between her toes perhaps I'm also going to put a little bit I still am just using a little bit of brown on my brush right now just to get myself the underside of her foot make sure I've got all my kind of chalk marks disappeared I still want to have a little bit of darkness but I'm going to incorporate another color in a second here. So now that I've got that, I've got my shadow in place, what I want to do is uh, whenever I look at my own skin, well, that's been holding on to my easel, so it's extra <laughs> pink right now, but the skin on my palms and the bottoms of my feet are always seem to be a little bit pinker than the rest of my skin. So I want to add a little bit of that pink hue to it. So I'm going to pick up a touch of my shoe color and brown on my brush. So I just have a teeny bit of my shoe color and brown and I'm going to kind of rub this into the bottom of the foot. And what this is going to do is this is going to give me a little bit of a pinkish hue in that skin at the bottom of the foot. You could really use any kind of um, pink that you wanted to or variation, but just adding that, I'm putting it on the back of the heel too because I feel like it's there too on my foot. <laughs> so just adding these little nuances of color changes are going to make it look a little bit more realistic. And then when we go to put the highlight on it, 
right in, in the side of the foot, that's gonna make it look even more realistic. So this is what I'm doing for here. You can certainly um, make any little modifications that you want. We're gonna be using this same brush for the next step, so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the third layer to the skin. <laughs> so this is, we're in essence gonna be finishing the skin here. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be mostly using my skin tone plus white, but if there's areas where I feel that I need to do any more tweaking um, with my brown, I would certainly do that. So what we're gonna in essence be doing is adding the effects from the light source. And again, my light source is up top. So I'll be adding highlights on the skin on that side. And I also want to speak to any further contour or shape to her, to her legs or her feet. So like on her shin, of course, I'll put a highlight up in through here, but I'll probably lighten up this area a little bit to show that it kind of goes around. Her knee, of course, will put a highlight at the top, but maybe I'll put other little highlights in through here to show the little structure of the, the kneecap. Um, on this leg in through here, this leg might not be as light as this one because it's a little bit further away from the light source, but I'll still have highlights on that shin and on the top of the foot. In through this foot, I'll put you know, a little highlight on her ankle bone, but I'll put a, a nice bright highlight on the top of her foot. And then I'll even put little highlights to um, on the side of her foot to show the edge of her foot or the contour, the shape of her foot. So where I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with a lighter version of her skin tone. So what I'm gonna do is I take my skin tone and I'm just gonna add white to it. So I'm going for a lighter version so this way I don't, sometimes I'll just, on my brush, I'll use a skin tone plus white in order to get a lighter version. Like when we were doing the shadows, I did the shadow, I did brown plus my skin tone on my brush at the same time. Well, this time I don't want it to be too streaky or too disconnected. So I am creating a lighter version of my skin tone. So just adding a little bit of white into it. You could also add a little bit of pink or something to change it a little bit different of a tone, but. I'm just going for a, a, a little bit of white in my um, skin tone to get my lighter version. So once you've got that lighter version, what I'm gonna do is put my highlights on. So I'm gonna, you can start really anywhere that you want, but I think I'm just gonna start up at the knee and we will be building a brighter highlight in a minute, but this is just again gonna kind of get that structure going and then um, we will add a super bright highlight at the end. I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because again, I don't want my paint to get um, out of control. I want to be able to control where I put these highlights and how they kind of blend into their neighboring colors. And if I have too much paint on my brush, I, I have a tendency to just keep blending and blending and blending and then it would kind of get out of control and everything I would um, paint over and I would end up with not much detail in my painting at all So I'm just kind of going with a very little bit of paint on my brush to get myself some highlights going on the top here I'm picking up more of that lighter skin tone. I'm going to come down this um, Down this shin bone in through here and then I'll get it to blend into the side of the leg so again, I put the 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 lighter version on that top side of the um, of the leg, and now I'm just blending it back into the the mid tone. I will pick up my mid tone in a in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of letting myself run out of paint and getting it to kind of um, blend out a little bit. Sometimes I can work a lot of these highlights with the the remnants that are on my brush. Um, which again kind of just speaks to me keeping myself in control at all times. Um, so I'm just kind of using the, the remnants on my brush right there to get this little bit of a highlight on the foot, rubbing this in through here. And again, I, I'm just using the remnants right now. This is how a, a lot of times I go through this process because I, I like to a lot of times blend using this rubbing technique because it allows me to just kind of watch that paint dry. I can see how it's being affected by the colors underneath it. I'm gonna pick up some of my um, regular skin tone now to get this 
uh, area in through here to blend a little bit better. So I just um, picked up some of my mid-tone skin tone, <laughs> the original skin tone, and I'm just getting this to blend out. And if you run into trouble where you feel that it's not blending as you want, just let it dry for a minute. Don't fight it when it's wet, you know, too wet, because sometimes that, again, will just get us into trouble because we start to panic. The, the paint is a little different of a color when it's wet to, than when it dries. So just, you know, allowing yourself the opportunity to just let it dry. See if you really do need to do, a, you know, fix it before you panic. So now that I've got that on there, that's looking pretty good on that side. I'm going to do the same thing for here. So I'm going to pick up that lighter skin tone. I'm going to give it uh, this leg a nice highlight on this left hand side coming down this shin bone. And again, I'm right now just kind of speaking to the contour of the um, of the leg. So I put it on and then I can rub it out. Um, coming along this right hand side and of course I don't need this leg to be as light as that leg but I still can start in the same spot with this with this um, lighter version of the skin and then when I go to do that amped up highlight I can certainly make the top leg a little bit lighter so this is looking pretty good to me I'm going to put a little bit on that foot so just again that lighter version of the skin tone coming on the top side of this foot and maybe bringing it down a little bit um, down the side of the foot. I still see some of my chalk. So I'm, not, I'm deciding whether or not I'm gonna go to my chalk or if I'm gonna erase that chalk in a minute. But putting that highlight on and then just too much paint on my brush. I'm wiping my brush off and then I just kind of rub this out. And again, I know that the foot kind of curves around this way and it's gonna dip in where that, the, where the arch, arc, <laughs> I always get that word wrong. Arch arc of the foot is so I just kind of let myself run out of paint in through there. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm going to start building a very bright highlight where I want. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm just going to pick up some white paint and very little bit. And I'm going to start again up at this knee because I feel this knee would be really nice and bright. So I've got my bright white on there and then I just kind of start rubbing it out. So I put it the brightest where I want, or I started where I want it the brightest, and then I can just kind of rub it out, and that it'll, that'll allow it to get fainter or more see-through or blended into the neighboring area. So that's gonna make it look like it is um, got a gradual gradient to it. And if it doesn't work just rubbing it, you can always add a tiny bit of water or you know liquid medium or a little bit more paint to your brush. And then I'm gonna come down here, but I don't necessarily want it to be white, white, white. So if you don't want it to be white, 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 you can pick up your light skin tone plus white. So again, just gradually build yourself. Don't go too light, too fast. Just slowly make your way to there. You can always add more. You can always make it brighter. You know, it's gonna be how how bright do you wanna go, you know? So I like to reserve my my brightest of my brights to to last because they make a really good impact. But if you start too soon, you might go too light too quickly and then you'll you'll miss out on some of that opportunity to build some really believable form in it. So this is looking pretty good. I think I need this to blend just a little bit more to this right. And then I'll move on to the other leg. I think I'm gonna pick up some of my light skin tone just to get this to blend in a little bit more in through here. And of course, you know, modify the skin tone to your own. So you can see I'm, I'm pretty close to my own, but you might, you know, want yours lighter or darker than mine. May, sometimes when I sit out in the sun, I do get a little bit of sun, but not, not enough to call myself anything other than really white. Oh, I got some paint down here too. Well, you get to see me make a correction on the fly. I'm taking a bristle brush with a little bit of water, seeing if I can scrub this out while it's still kind of in its wet stage. I didn't get it all the way. So I'll have to wait till that dries and I'll put some of my background color on it. So this leg looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna move on to this one and I'm not, I don't want it as white as this. So I'm gonna use white plus my light um, skin tone 
just to give myself a little bit extra bump of a highlight on this side of the foot and maybe on the little top side of, or that side of the shin and a little top side of this foot in through here. And then I would just let it dry and see if there's any additional um, amping up that I want to do. You know, if I want the calf to look a little bit more bumped out, I can just add just a hint of a little lighter color. If I want that shin to look shinier, like she has, you know, really smooth legs, I can just add a little kind of streak of lightness around the edge or just make sure that those edges are really smooth. That'll give her a smoother looking leg. And then we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done and do any kind of little fiddling that you feel is necessary, you can put this medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer to our shoes. I'm gonna use my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my peach, brown, and black. Oh, and I'm gonna do my shadow underneath this shoe as well. So this is gonna, in essence, be the shadows on the shoes to create the contours and shapes, and it's also gonna tell the story of the light, so how the light affects them, which will be the shadows on the opposing side of the light source. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first start with a shadow underneath this shoe. So I just have my light source up top, so I'm gonna just create a shadow underneath this shoe and it's gonna kind of be skewed a little bit to the side. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and brown on my small brush. I'm going to start by just kind of underlining this, um, the, the front sole or the front part of the shoe like this. And I'm doing a little bit disconnected from the, or a little bit out from the shoe as well. I also have a touch of water on my brush, so this is allowing me to give um, these clean edges to it and allow me to kind of keep that paint moving while I decide where I want it to go. So black, brown, and a touch of water are on my brush right now. I'm gonna pull this up this back side of the shoe a little bit so it looks like the, the shoe has some dimension to it. And then I'm gonna bring this shadow over by the heel and again, you can have this kind of as large or as small as you want. I'm just kind of a, a getting it to appear as if maybe part of the foot and part of the leg and part of the shoe are all just being shadowed on that ground. So, or on the floor, whatever this um, place is that she is. So I'm going to just bring this around just a little bit. And then, of course, I'm going to um, bring it down this right hand side. And again, just kind of going with what... I intuitively feel that the shape of this shadow might be. Shadows are great because they can really be skewed and take on different forms depending on what, you know, where that light source is and how things are um, uh, bouncing off of it and reflecting and, you know, all, there's so many variables to it. And so the likelihood of a shadow being skewed is quite good. So that's looking pretty good for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up to my shoe. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create um, a little bit darker version of my shoe color. So I have magically done it. What I did was I took my shoe color and I added brown to it. So I'm just going for a darker version of my shoe color to create um, some nice depth around my shoe. So this is looking pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna put it in all of the areas that I feel are gonna have shadows or gonna be um, curved. So I've got this at the bottom side of my shoe in through here like this. I'm gonna have it all on this heel in through here because I feel that this heel based on where my light source is would be pretty, pretty much in the dark. So that works for me. I'm gonna put it on the back side of the shoe in through here. I'm gonna add a little bit of my um, shoe color to it to get it to blend in here. So I'm picking up shoot my peach on my dirty brush to get this to blend up into the mid-tone color of my shoe. This is all pretty similar to how we approached it in the skin. So I put my shadow on and then I'm just uh, blending it into the 
main color of the shoe. I will add a little bit more darkness on that right hand side of the heel in a second and underneath the um, arch arc of the of the shoe as well but this is just going to get me started. I'm picking up a little bit more of the dark color the darker shoe color to get the bottom whoops that was, got a little away from me this will get the the bottom part of here in like this and then I'll pick up my um, peach to blend it in and again it'll look a little bit darker as it dries but right now just getting on getting it getting the shadow part on and blending it in with the mid-tone of that shoe I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, brown and black on my brush right now to give myself an extra little punch of a shadow right underneath here uh, to just give myself that extra bit of depth underneath that um, crook of the shoe and then I'm going to put a tiny bit on this back side of the heel as well so just amping up these little bits of shadows will add that extra amount of dimension and again, you can make yours as subtle as you want or as powerful as you want. That's going to be a visual preference on your part. But if you can, the intensity of these highlights and shadows is what's going to kind of speak to the viewer as to the intensity of the light source. I'm going to put a little bit of this black and brown back here behind my foot, right in this little area here, just to give my shoe a little bit of dimension. And I'm going to move on to my next shoe. So again, washing and drying my brush. I'm going to put the dark shoe color on my brush and I'm going to put it on the opposing side of the light source. So light source is up top. That means my darker tone is going to come down on this bottom side. It's going to be, again, probably most of the heel because the heel kind of sits underneath that shoe. So the shoe, the, the front part of the shoe. So this would probably be pretty shadowed by this part of the shoe like this and I get it to blend in a little bit in a second but I just reloaded with the darker version to get the underside of here like that and now I'm going to pick up my peach to get these two areas to blend in just give myself some good form on this shoe blend in in through here like this. The top part up and through here, I don't know if I would see too much of that, um, the, the, how we kind of darkened the other one. I don't know if I would see much of that, but I might incorporate it just a little bit so we'll have a little bit of the shadow color. So I'm picking up the dark shoe color again just to put a teeny tiny bit uh, right in through there just to speak to the form I guess and then I'm gonna again pick up a tiny bit of black and brown just so I can get amp up that little bit of a shadow on this bottom side and this also helps to kind of clean up edges and stuff if you feel that you know maybe your edges weren't as crisp and clean as you wanted adding these extra little amped up highlights and shadows can help to to clean those things up as well and then you just I'm going to do the same thing on this bottom side but I might lose this bottom side if I um, use brown with it because it'll be too similar to the background color so I'm going to pick up just black paint to get this bottom to get this one to have a little bit of a shadow so I, I'm working with the contrast on the color that it's near so if I if I had gone uh, brown and black for this shadow, I might have lost the edge of my shoe. So that's where I decided to just use black. Um, so it's a little bit darker than that background color so that way you can see it. And then maybe just a little bit of it um, as well in through here. Again, just to give me that extra punch and to maybe make it a little bit more um, visible in through here and then fiddle with it all you want we're going to be using the same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is the third step to our shoes which is just adding our final details which would be our highlights and finessing the shape a little bit more so i'm going to be using my small brush the colors I'm going to use are peach and white, and if I need to go into any other colors, I certainly will let you know. So really what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be adding highlights on the tips of my toes 
to kind of form that um, that shoe so it looks like it's got some some depth to it and some form so her foot can actually fit in it. I'll put little bits of highlights maybe on the edges of the shoe um, just to give it an, an edge that looks three-dimensional and then I'll just make sure that it all kind of um, blends in with the sides of the shoes. I'm going to make this one obviously have a highlight on the top kind of flat part of the top of the shoe. So the adding these highlights is really giving the rest of the form to the shoe. So I'm going to pick up some white plus peach on my brush at the same time. I have more white than peach. This is just to really get my highlights started and then we'll, um, it looks like she's got a little freckle on her foot. That's cute. <laughs> That's an unintentional freckle that she's got. So anyways, I've got my white plus a little bit of pink. I'm starting up at the top, or peach, not pink. I'm starting up at the top, in through here, just kind of giving myself the, um, the shape that I want for the tip of the shoe. So I put my bright area up in through here. And then I know that this would be kind of a flat spot where her, where the top of the, the surface of the shoe is. So I'm going to kind of leave that a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to get this side to blend in with the peach color. So I'm going to pick up more of the peach right now and get this to blend in. I didn't wash my brush. I'm just using my dirty brush right now. I can certainly put it coming in through here. So this is all going to speak to kind of the form of the shoe. So it would be a little bit maybe bumped out in through here. So again, just my dirty brush plus whatever remnants of the white that I had on there a little bit ago. And then I'm just going to kind of make sure that this is blended well. I'm going to amp up that highlight in a minute, but right now I'm just really kind of getting the um, the form on the shoe the way that I want it, like this. I'm picking up more of my peach plus a tiny bit of white to just get this up, this right hand um, or the edge of the shoe in through here. And of course, this was this is the time where you can um, do any kind of modifications to the edges. If you need to clean up your edges, now is definitely the time to do that. And then I'm just going to get it to blend in with the base color. Maybe you have a favorite pair of shoes that you are emulating and maybe yours has wrinkles and stuff in it. You can certainly incorporate that kind of information now too. I'm just picking up more of my peach so I can get this to blend into the darker area. So again, just overlapping those tonal shifts in order to get it to look nice and natural. I think I'm going to pick up a tiny bit more white just to get this to go just maybe a little bit lighter in through here before I amp up that um, at the tippy top. So I just picked, I put white and then I picked up a little bit more peach. So back and forth between the white and the peach to get these, um, these lightness and um, areas to get the sections of the shoe to pop out a little bit more for me. So there we go. That's looking good in through there. I'm going to get this to just blend in a little bit in through there. And now I'm going to pick up just white paint to give myself a real bright tip to this toe. Bright tippy toe in through here. And again, just kind of layering that on pretty darn bright. And then I can get it to blend out just a little bit in through here. And then I'll just move on to my next shoe once I get this blended the way that I want. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. And you don't just want it on the edge. So I am pulling it down a little bit. So it gives the uh, illusion of it having a roundness to it. If you just put that brightness right at the tip, it's not going to look round. It's not going to look like it's gradually coming, you know, coming around the corner. So I just keep elevating. I just keep picking up more white in my peach to get this highlight to just kind of travel down the side of that shoe a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good to me. Maybe just a little bit over there. There we go. I'll move on to my next shoe now. So again, white plus peach are on my brush at the same time. And you could have gone for a lighter version. Um, of your peach like we did on the skin tone, but I feel that I, I'm doing such a small area that I can just kind of control the tonal shifts of it uh, on the fly like this, but if you felt that you couldn't do that or you were having difficulty, you could start with the same process that we did on the, um, on the legs and even when we went to the darker tone of the 
um, of the shoe. You could certainly just start with that and then build your way to the to the white. And I'm just doing a light area on the top part of this shoe and then I will um, get it to blend out into the areas that I feel it needs to be blended out. I'm bringing it down as far, maybe this needs to come down just a little bit farther so it makes it look like her foot can fit in there. <laughs> like we've got a nice kind of um, width to, to that shoe and this would definitely I think have a little bit of highlight coming up the edge and through there and then maybe just a little bit more on the tip in through here and just bring this back towards this right hand side and again I'm just flipping back and forth between white and my peach and they are both a lot of time on my brush at the same time <laughs> so oops that shoe grew on me in through there nothing a finger can't get too quick enough <laughs> and then I'm just going to kind of blend this back making it look as if it's getting darker and darker the farther away from this contour area it gets um, let's see what here more a little bit more peach on my brush just to make sure I've got this blended in and then just make sure I've got a nice good coverage up in through here I'm gonna add a little bit of the peach and the white up along this maybe this back little corners got a little bit peeking out over there and then maybe just a little bit more white on this tip in through here and then I would just kind of let it dry like I do everything else see if I want to fiddle with it anymore and then um, I might add a little bit more highlights here or there just to amp it up make it look a little extra shiny again same thing with her legs if, if you wanted them to be shinier just add those little bits of light highlights if I want her shoes to be shiny just the more contrast in the color so a little bright white sparkles here and there will make them look even shinier and then I'm going to um, wash and dry this small brush Oh, you know, I want one more highlight. Don't go anywhere. I, I know that I want a highlight on this little guy over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to go peach and white. I feel like this little tip of the shoe would be illuminated. So we're going to go for one more little highlight right in through here. And this is going to make all the difference in the world. I know it is. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we do things that we don't need, but sometimes we do things that make our painterly eye happy. So this is one of those times this is going to make my painterly eye happy. So there we go. I've got my, all my highlights on that I want, and I'm going to be washing and drying this small brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going to go bottom right on this one. I'm using my small brush. I'm going to use black paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you like for your identifying mark to be. It's totally fine because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted your, yourself some a nice set of legs. <laughs> I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>